Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to extend a univariate analysis discussion in this video and uh, going to cover numerical variables and uh, you know what kind of analysis we can do with these kind of uh, variables. So I have covered uh, topics like skewness, uh, kurtosis, standard deviation, variance, mean, median, mode and quartiles. So uh, these are covered in a separate videos. So you can watch those videos to get more details on those topics. Okay. So folks, this is Nitin who is on a mission to democratize artificial intelligence, big data, Hadoop, uh, cloud computing and blockchain to the entire world. And with this aim, uh, I'm creating the associated content and publishing it on a periodic basis in order to make it available for the entire community who wants to learn these modern technologies. So you can subscribe to my channel or press the bell icon to keep on getting the latest updates regarding hottest technologies of 21st century. You can also follow me on Twitter at the link given here. And I have also added uh, subtitles in languages like Hindi, English, French for your convenience. So you can enable them as per your needs. Okay. So let's get uh, go back to our Iris data frame. Um, you know, uh, in that Iris data frame, uh, we have uh, different columns like sepal length. So let me open the Jupyter notebook. So in here, All right, so in here you can see that uh, we have several columns, right? Uh, we have sepal length, uh, we have uh, sepal width, uh, petal length and petal width, as well as uh, the species column. So here basically I have grouped it, so that's why the data is looking like this. You can see this uh, data frame here to get a closer look at it, okay? Now, there are uh, basically, when we talk about uh, numerical variables, there are two types of numerical variables. First one is continuous variable, uh, continuous numerical variable, which is a variable which could literally take forever to count, okay? In fact, you would uh, get to forever and never finish counting them. And if I take an example, uh, take an example of age of a person. So you can't count an age and uh, why can't you uh, count an age? Because it will literally take forever. For example, you 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 know the person's age age could be 35 years, 11 months, uh, four days, six hours, five seconds, seven milliseconds, nine nanoseconds. So you know you can keep on uh, you know counting it. So in a nutshell, these are the variables which has uh, some fractional values, right? So some decimal uh, form of values. So like uh, 2.14, 2.15, 1.6, 1, 1.7, likewise. So you can just keep on, you know, uh, uh, it will take forever to basically count. Now, when it comes to the second type of uh, numerical variable, uh, these are called as discrete ones. So the second type of numerical variables are called discrete numerical variables. And these variables are countable in nature, meaning uh, you can uh, count them in finite amount of time. For example, uh, you can count the change in your pocket. Okay, you can very well count uh, change in your pocket. And uh, if uh, you can also count the student in your class, right? How many students are there in your class? In fact, you can also count number of cars in a garage or a parking lot, right? or as a matter of fact on, a, on the street. So in order to analyze these numerical variables, we use several statistical techniques. Uh, for example, we can count the number of observation of particular variable or column and plot it using histograms, which I think I have already covered previously. So if I take an iris data set, uh, more partic particularly this sample, uh, sample length, right? Uh, column then I could do something like uh, here I have shown you right this thing so I can count the number of observations for each species each category of species so we have three categories of species and we, you can see that each 
uh, category has 50 observations or rows okay so this is the way we can count the number of observation for a particular uh, category okay so these are numerical in nature right and you can see these are decimal form uh, you know these variables have uh, values in the decimal form so these are called continuous variables okay because these are in decimal format but if let us say uh, we have some uh, you know countable numbers which are non fractional or non decimal uh, number uh, those are called discrete numbers just like this one okay so 50 is a discrete number because it is not in a decimal form okay so these are in whole number form so these are called uh, discrete variables or discrete numerical variables because you can actually count these variables okay the value so you can uh, basically count uh, you can see that, that there are certain unique values in this particular data frame right so 4.7 so there might be uh, you know um, uh, 7 or 8 4.7 uh, values present uh, okay so each of these values are unique values in this data frame so if i take sepal length example uh, if i want to group each unique value present in the sepal length column and count the occurrence of each individual unique value so these values are unique 4.9 i can have several 4.9 values in uh, this particular data frame right so if i want to count the occurrence of these individual uh, unique value i can do so by basically typing the code like uh, so let me let me copy this particular statement okay and here what i want to do is i want to basically uh, group each unique value present in this sepal length column okay and count the occurrence of those each individual unique values so let me replace this species column with sepal length gth sepal length cm okay and we want to reset the index we want to calculate the size and then reset the in index uh, making the uh, column name as count and renaming the column as sepal length basically okay so what i'm trying to do here is i'm just trying to uh, calculate the unique uh, a value present unique values present in sepal length column and count counting the occurrence of oh, all those unique values okay so let's run this cell perfect so now here you can see that sepal length has these unique values 4.3 4.4 4.5 and so on till 7.9 so you can see that uh, this 4.4 value has three occurrences in the entire uh, data set okay meaning uh, we have we had three rows or observations where we had sepal length value as 4.4 similarly for uh, sepal length 5 we had 10 occurrences so you you know that you know in this data set we have 150 observations so out of those 150 observations 10 observations were in such a way that they were having a sepal length value as Five, right now you can uh, also plot a histogram of these unique values to visualize uh, the distribution of uh, these values okay so how can we check the distribution of these values okay so we can plot a, a basically histogram using matplotlib library so here i'm keeping the figure size as 10 by 7 only okay and then we are using the column uh, called sepal length okay so sepal length because we want to uh, create the histogram on a column called sepal length right and now we can basically uh, just provide the parameter values for histo uh, creating a histogram 
or histogram chart. So x, x is the value of a column sepal length. It stores the column sepal length value where we want to uh, basically create this histogram using which and then we will create the bins. So number of bins we can keep is let us say in this case 20 and let me give a color for this histogram let us say green okay and let me give the title as well so title would be uh sepal and in let us say centimeter okay and x let me give the x label okay X level would, would be sepal length cm y label will we will give the y label also so y label would be count okay and let's plot it all right so it looks like some unknown property bin mm-hmm all right, so it's oh, it should be bins. Okay, perfect. So we can see the distribution of the values of uh, column sepal length, right? So it is nearly um, a normal distribution, like of uh, uh, like a curve, right? So normal distribution curve is like bell curve. So it is nearly a bell curve shape, right? So we can see that this is in a normal distribution form. Okay. So this is the way we can visualize our data. Okay. To do further analysis. Right. So we can calculate the mean value for this particular uh, histogram uh, or uh, the distribution. Okay. And minimum values, maximum value, which I'm going to cover later on. So we can see that y axis represent here uh, count. And x axis represents the unique sepal length values, right? And uh, we can also find out the minimum, maximum uh, values, mean values, median values, quartiles, and range of these numerical variables for further analysis. For doing further analysis, well, we, uh, this is one thing. So you can see that minimum value here is 4.3, maximum is 7, 7.9. But we could also use a box plot, which is a better way to visualize uh you know uh, the univariate variables so uh, using box plot you can find out what is the minimum value what is the maximum value uh, what is the median value the 25th percentile value the 2075th percentile value etc okay so minimum value is nothing but the lowest observation value uh, given for that numerical variable in the data set and maximum value is the highest observation value given for that numerical uh, variable in the data set. So I have uh, created separate videos to provide an explanation on mean, median, mode, quartiles, interquartile range, variance, standard deviation, range, etc. So you can watch those videos to get a complete understanding on these topics. And by the way, um, mode, uh, variance, standard deviation, courtesies, skewness can all be visualized using box plot so let me go ahead and create a box plot quickly to explain minimum maximum mean median and quartile values and before uh, plotting the uh, box plot let's remove the id column uh, from the data frame so in the data frame we have this id column right so this is not uh, this is not going to be used in our analysis so let me remove that okay so First of all, I will be removing that column. Okay, and let me create a new data frame, name it as new DF, and we will keep only the, the you know variables which are required here. So sepal length, CM, then sepal width, CM. Petal length, CM, and then petal width. Okay. Petal width, CM. Okay. Let's see the new data frame values. 
So you can see that ID column has been removed as well as we don't have a species column here. Okay. So now let's uh, create a box plot here. So we will keep the figure size as 10 by 7 only here as well. So pick size equals to 10 by 7. And then new df dot box plot. So here you can see that box plot is drawn here. Okay, so this this is a box plot for sepal length. This one is for sepal width. This one is for petal length, and this one is for petal width. So this this particular value here, this this is the minimum value. Okay, and uh, this one is the maximum value of this sepal length column. This one is the 75th percentile value of sepal length column. This one is 25th percentile value of sepal, sepal length column. And this one is the, this green horizontal line is the median value of uh, sepal length column. So, uh, okay, so let me, uh, we can also numerically calculate uh, this value, the minimum value. So this will come around 4.3 here so you can see that this value is between 4 and 5 so it is coming around 4.3 and we can numerically numerically calculate the minimum value here okay so the way we calculate the minimum value is very simple so df and then name the column which is sepal length cm and then try to find out the minimum value here okay um sepal length cm so it says invalid index syntax all right oh yes okay okay so i actually use dot here so don't need to use dot so you can see 4.29999 which is nearly 4.3 approximately 4.3 value so here you can see the minimum value is 4.3 so we are just kind of validating the value uh, okay, if I want to calculate the maximum value for this column sepal length, it's 7.9 and it is right. It is 7.9 here. You can see the maximum value is 7.9, right? Now, if I want to calculate, let us say mean, um, uh, mean value here, all I need to do is just replace it with mean and you can see that it is 5.84. And if I want to create a, or calculate the median value, just replace it with median, which is 5.9. So the median value for this is 5.8. Sorry, it's 5.8. So you can very well see that the this this value is median value, and it is coming in between 5 and 6. So it is close to 5 5.8. It is it is actually 5.8. The value of this median value uh, median is 5.8. So it is correctly calculating it. Now, if I want to see the 25th percentile value, we can calculate the 25th percentile also. Uh, and the way we calculate 25th percentile is uh, using the NumPy uh, function called percentile. Okay. And, and we want to calculate it for sepal length, right? So sepal length CM. Okay, and what do you want to calculate the 25th percentile? So the parameter we will provide is 25th. So it is coming somewhere around 5.1, right? So it is coming somewhere around 5.1, which is right because you can see this 25th percentile value is near 5.1 only. This line is near 5.1. So this is the 25th percentile. And if I want to calculate the 75th percentile you can calculate it by using by just replacing 25th is 75th and you can see that the value is 6.4 okay so here you can see that the value is 6.4 here right so basically uh, in this bo uh, box plot we can see or visualize that majority of data points are in between 25th and 75th percentile Okay, and the medium value is 5.8. But what are these dots or points here in this sepal width box plots? 
these are nothing but outliers okay because these are outside the uh, minimum and maximum values so these are we can treat them like outliers here okay and we can also say that the median value of sepal length is greater than median value of sepal width petal length and petal width okay so we can visualize or provide a summary kind of summary using these box plots so these are very helpful and sometimes these box plots are called as box and whiskers box and whiskers plot because these are this is the box and these uh, minimum and maximum values are like whiskers so we call it as box and whiskers plots okay and uh, these points are kind of a measure of dispersion here okay so majority of data points are lying in this particular segment or uh, in between 25th and 75th percentile okay so i have already covered uh, how to plot uh, histogram uh, representing count for each unique values of continuous variables called sepal length uh, already right so this is the one which i am talking about so we have i have already covered that and this was a box plot okay so folks uh, this is it uh, for this video and uh, to conclude we discussed about uh, you know continuous and discrete uh, numerical variables uh, here also discussed about a box plot to explain minimum maximum median quartile values okay as well as i also uh, created a histogram to show individual occurrences of unique values from univariate analysis perspective so here is today's question uh, uh, okay so which method of univariate analysis with respect to numerical variables did you find useful okay in fact most useful so please share your comments in the comment section given below i would be happy to hear from your side and if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber uh, to our channel consider clicking that uh, little subscribe button and in case you have already subscribed uh, then click on bell icon uh, to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with us guys uh, um, i will be covering next topic in the upcoming videos so keep on watching thank you